Hey everybody, this is your calculus video on 5.3, the definite integral. Definite integral means it has certain starting and stopping points. Like, for example, like that. We want the area from here to there. Um, you put your low here and your high there. And so you want the area from here to there. Um, now there are certain rules that you're going to have to um, understand and know. You're going to have to interpret your limits as sums of integrals, like adding up your rectangles, um, using your rules, using known areas to find integrals, evaluating definite integrals, finding area by that, finding average value and definite integrals as limits of sums. So um, first, uh, recall we use integrals to approximate the area under the graph of a function and we use our rectangles. We do this by partitioning or dividing it into um, subintervals of equal length. On the last section, we usually used um, previously two or four because of the lower and the upper. Um, we approximate the area by adding the areas of the rectangles. Um, so like the area would be the first plus the second. Um, so each has length um, B minus A over two if there's two, but if there's four, then we do B minus A over four. Um, the more rectangles there are, the better the approximation. Um, so now we're using U notation on this. Um, so the area of the four rectangles would be for U1, the function, um, the first one divided by four plus the second one divided by four, um, the third one divided by four, and your fourth one. Now, um, on the calculator, um, you can do graph entry edit to input it, and then do analyze graph and six for integral. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. So you may want to do something like this. Just put x squared as an example. Then you do menu, analyze, integral is number six. And then it says lower bound. And you're going to either click or maybe you can type a number. Like I'm going to type two press enter, and then I'm going to um, type 4 for the upper. Now notice I did have to move my cursor. Actually, I'm going to do 3.5 enter. So um, that tells you your answer right there. Now speaking of all that, um, recently I discovered that um, on the previous section, in calculus. Um, you can go to menu and then four for calculus. And um, there's sum. And so that's the summation. So you could have done things like um, k equal one whoops, I just meant k there k equal 1 to 5 of x squared. Whoops. Um, didn't like my variable. I meant k squared. OK, um, so you can do things like that. Um, and, you know, just learn as you go along. Um, remember, I just added them separate. I would have done 
like 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared, and you get the same result. Um, but if you want to use that to your advantage, you can. Um, now, also within calculus, I see numerical integral, which we may end up using as well, um, like 1 to 3 of x squared dx. Um, that tells you an answer. Let's see if we get the same thing um, as we did on the other graph. Um, let's see. Let's do this as x squared. And we do our analyzed graph integral from 1 to 3. Okay, we did get the exact same thing. Um, so on the graph screen, you can get it there. And on the calculate screen, you can get it there. So um, let me make a note of that. On the calculate screen, you can do menu, calculus, Um, in this case, I wanted um, 2 for numerical integral. And on the previous section, we used menu, calculus, um, 3 for sum. Maybe on your calculator, it's 4. Um, it just depends. Um, and then there's also... Um, derivative at a point and minimum and maximum. Okay, um, so just continue getting better on your calculator. Um, now this says see page 264 for a picture showing your rectangles. So here they're showing rectangles below because it measures to the x-axis and these. And then here you have even more. Um, in the subintervals, they all have equal width, but you can make them thinner by increasing the number. Um, when it has varying widths, you can make sure they're all thin by controlling the width of the widest one. And then define the norm, which is the double bar P, to be the largest. This is called double bar. If the norm is a small number, then all of them have small width. In this section, we consider the limit as um, the norm approaches zero. So basically, the norm approaching zero. OK, so you have your norm approaching zero. Um, this limiting process leads us to the definition of the indefinite integral over a closed interval AB. That means it includes those numbers. It includes the endpoints if it's called closed. Okay, so here you have your formal definition. Um, let f be a function defined on the closed interval. We say a number j is the definite integral um, over a, b, and j is the limit of the Riemann sums. There you have your little summation thing, and you're going from k equal 1 to n. Um, so, of course, when we're typing it, it doesn't 
show up perfectly, it should be like this. And then have your function, and they're using C for some reason. I don't know, they use weird letters sometimes. But that's from the book. Um, so now given the number epsilon greater than zero, there's a corresponding number delta greater than zero. So this was epsilon. And this is delta. Such that for every partition and um, having the norm less than delta and any choice, like wherever you want, um, as far as where X is, we have the sum less than epsilon. Um, and that's the absolute value bars. So um, we did this before a long time ago, it seems. Um, but remember, delta relates to X and epsilon relates to Y. So remember when we were talking about our X's, we could say delta is like that much. And if we say like Y1 and Y2, then epsilon could be like that much. I guess I meant the whole thing, if it's X1 and X2. Um, so delta and the X's go together and the Y's and the epsilon. Um, so your definition involves a limiting process in which the norm of the partition goes to zero. Um, given a function of a real variable X, um, where it's basically just not imaginary, then the definite integral is defined informally as the signed area, positive or negative, of the um, region bounded by the graph and the x-axis and the vertical lines x equal a and x equal b. So if it's above, it's going to be positive, and when it's below, it's negative. So anything above adds to the total, and anything below subtracts. So like, I don't want to really give an example, but um, I guess I will anyway. So if you have that above and that below, and if it really is a sine function, then the area cancels out. Because this would be plus, this would be minus. Depending on what your um, boundaries are. Okay, um, and so then you can read more about it. Um, the function is called the integrand. So that could be x squared, x cubed, etc. Um, the formulas on 267. So it looks like the limit of the sums. So you have two parts here. Um, so basically, you're going to have a number plus k times the boundary, basically, and then times the boundary again. So um, you also have a theorem for continuous functions. Um, or if it has, at most, a certain number, like finitely many jump discontinuities, then it exists and it's integrable. Okay, you also have a theorem about both functions being integrable and your definite integral satisfies the rules. Um, so that's on 
269 in this table. Um, so most of them are gonna be typed out for you, but the order of integration is A to B normally, but here they have B to A, and so then you have to reverse it and change it to negative to make it from A to B. So in other words, you can switch the order like that. And then there's other ones um, listed here. Your zero width, which is when it goes from A to A. Um, your constant multiple, when you can bring the number in front. Your sum and difference, when you split it. And your additive, which means if you have A to B and B to C, then you can say A to C. Um, then you have your min-max and your domination. Um, so those are all um, right here. Your min-max is comparing least to greatest. Your domination, like F, is dominating G because it's greater. Um, so then for regarding the area under the graph of a non-negative function, um, again, it's about doing your integral and your average value, um, which is the mean, is your formula 1 over b minus a and then the integral of it. So. Um, as a reminder, remember if it's x squared for your function, then your derivative would have been like 2x, but your integral of x squared would have been more like raise it a power and then 1 over that number. And then you got to say plus c. Now that's when it's indefinite integral, and this was the derivative. Okay, so they say integral of a linear function, if it's x, um, then, you know, you do your, basically, your right minus left. Um, you're going to change x to be x squared, um, but then since we're using b, it's b squared over 2. So that's the same as saying a half b squared minus a half a squared. Um, here, you're just... Um, bringing out your constant and doing b minus a and multiplying. If it's x squared, you do like this. Um, like you might prefer saying one-third b cubed minus one-third a cubed. And then sometimes you need to use a combination. Um, so notice the exponent power is increased and you divide by that same exponent so it's your new denominator. Okay, so here we go. Um, starting kind of gently, this is going from three to six, so you put three and six here. Um, at this particular one, you have a C squared, so you put X squared, and then this needs to be DX. So don't forget that part. And then um, on this one, you're also going from three to six, and it's one over that. You're basically just changing your CK to be X. And again, it's DX. So this particular problem is good because it's um, showing you all your rules, basically. Um, this one from four to four was called the zero width. And so that's just zero. Now this one's a bit weird. They're going from seven to two of G. I'm just going to abbreviate. You know, it's really GX, DX. Um, so we saw earlier we would have to say negative and then reverse it. Go two to seven of G. And then we're basically, um, whoops, um, 
2 to 7 is actually 8. And so that's your answer. So you're basically putting the 7 to be your upper end, not your lower end. So because of that, you have to have a minus. Um, now this one, you're just doing your 6 times it. 6 times your integral 2 to 7 of g. And so that's 6 times 8, which is 48. Um, and then this one, okay, this is a bit weird. You're going 4 to 7. So let's think about what we do here. So um, what you do on this one is you start with 2 to 7, and then you subtract 2 to 4. And we're using f. So you have the integral 2 to 7 of f, which is really 3, and then minus the integral from, oh, that's 2 to 4. Hello. Uh, from 2 to 7 is really 8. OK. Minus the one that's from 2 to 4, which is 3. So you do 8 minus 3, which is 5. So that's how you do it. You basically have to break it up. Um, now this one, you're going back to 2 to 7, but you're doing g minus f. So your g was 8, and your f is also 8. Um, so that's from here. g is 8, and f is 8. That's where 2 to 4 was 3. Um, then this one, you want 3g minus f. And on both of these, you're going 2 to 7. So this is my shorthand notes on it. Um, so that's 3 times 8 minus 8. So um, 24 minus 8 is 16. OK, now on this one, um, you're basically going to do your integral um, is going to be square root 16 minus 4 squared um, minus square root of 16 minus negative 4 squared. So a picture of what this would look like is um, the following. We need the square root of 16 minus x squared. So you basically have your semicircle with radius 4. And you're trying to get your area so um, let's do our analyze graph and integral from negative 4 enter to 4 enter now, um, this shows me that it's um, 25.1327. So think about, um, we're getting the area of a semicircle. So if it were the whole circle, it'd be area is pi r squared. And so, um, in ours, 
it'd be um, a semicircle. And so its area is a half pi r squared. Um, so you can just think a half pi and then four squared. And so 16 over two is eight, so that's eight pi. So you don't really have to break it up this way. Um, you should just use your area formula. Um, now, if you want to double check, um, 8 pi as a decimal, that's the 25.13. So um, you need this answer to be in terms of pi. Okay, on this one, again, we're using a known area formula and it's a triangle. So it's time, the base times height divided by two. Um, so that's a half times the base, which is 20, um, times the height, which is 10. And so the entire area, um, so the whole area is 100. Notice that's not our answer. Um, the whole area is if it's from negative 10 to 10. So uh, what we need is negative 4 to 4, and so we're going to want to graph it. So you want to graph that function 1 is 10 minus the absolute value of x. You don't have to put the dx. That would actually be worse. And you don't really have to do that part either. Well, I guess I'll show it both ways. Um, so you can do it on the graph, which is my preferred method, and just say 10 minus the absolute value of x. And let's make this a little higher. negative 15 to 15. Okay, so let's do our menu, analyze. Integral is number six, and our lower bound um, is going to be negative four, enter, and then our upper bound is going to be four, enter. And so then you can see your area um, up there is 64. Okay, so that's from the graph. So that was menu, analyze. And then six was integral. And then you do your lower negative four and your upper four. And that tells you your answer. Now, um, like we said a few minutes ago, if you just want to do it here, you probably can also. Menu, calculus, numerical integral, and here put negative four and four. And then we want 10 minus the absolute value of x um, dx. And so you also get 64 that way. So um, this was or from the scratch pad. Integral negative 4, 4, 10 minus absolute value x dx, and it said 64. So whether you want to use it from a graph or not. All right, um, that looks like a good stopping point for that video. Hope that helps.